Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we are here with a Vorkath guide for Old School RuneScape. Vorkath is a big old blue dragon boss that you can do after completing Dragon Slayer 2. It's pretty profitable and decent for med levels to try to get a very, very efficient hold into PVMing. It's good good money, and honestly, it's, it's pretty decent time. Good range XP can be done on a Slayer task for blue dragons as a task. So just a lot of pros to the method, and uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into to the guide as far as to how to kill it. As I said already, Dragon Slayer 2 is a requirement, so you'll need that. Uh, in addition to that, for range and melee, as far as the stats go, I say requirements. They're really just suggestions. I mean, people are getting level 4 fire capes, um, so, you know, I, they're not required. They're just what I would recommend before I would come here and camp, because honestly, while you may be able to come to Vorkath and get a kill, um, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good money for you if you're killing it very, very slowly. So, for melee, I would say 90 strength, 90 attack, along with 75, preferably higher defense, but, I mean, some people are, you know, a locked account so that's fine that's as far as what i'd say for melee where i'd be comfortable as far as range i would go with 90 range and 75 defense you can come with less than 90 i mean 85 to 90 is okay but it's gonna be rough so if you need to you can um if you gotta get your first 50 kc or something that's cool would really recommend to be in the high 80s for the dps skills and then if you're able to come here, or if you think you can manage a couple kills, as far as what you can expect, Vorkath, the first two items on the top left are the Vizies that I guess you can't expect, but you could uh, get lucky and hit. The first one being the Draconic, which is like 5.5 mil maybe, and the Skeletal Vizzy being the second, which is closer to 30 mil. Kind of the big ticket item here, but again, very rare to see. The Dragon Bone Necklace to the right at 1 and 1k is just... It's honestly not a drop even worth really talking about. It's like 80k at the moment. It's just it's useful for prayer bonus, and prayer bonus isn't all that needed in the game. So it doesn't really fit a meta. It doesn't have much value. But you can also get elite clues here at a 1 in 65 rate, which is pretty good if you're you know looking to get some good GP while also maybe hunting master clues. And then the 1 in 50 drop rate for the Vorkath head. This is useful for the Ava's Assembler after Dragon Slayer 2. If you're looking to get that, the reason this has an asterisk, because if you don't get a Vorkath head in your first 49 KC, you are guaranteed it on your 50th kill. So you will have it by 50 KC. After that, it's all a 1 in 50 drop. As far as the kills per hour, if you have the recommended stats, it's going to be somewhere between 18 to 30, just depending on your stats and how good you are, along with your gear, you know, just a little combination of everything. You can get a little higher than 30 if you're you know really really crazy but not much so 30 is going to be about where most people cap out and the gp per hour at least as far as loot that you pick up is 2.9 to 4.5 mil an hour this doesn't take into account supplies so it's probably closer to you know two and a half to four mil an hour depending on uh, what gear setup you're rocking and all that and as far as what else you need to know before we get into the gear, this is where we are trying to go. Vorkath, as you know if you've done Dragon Slayer 2, can be located up here by traveling through Torfin. And as far as how you get here, the Fremenic Boots 4 are the best way to get here. That is by doing the Fremenic Elite Diary. You'll teleport on over in this little market area and it's a very quick run up here. The next best way is what I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to teleport to my house. So after every Vorkath trip, I drink from this Ornate Rejuvenation Pool and then I run up to the Lunar Isle Teleport. And then I bank right here on the far right booth, get my whole inventory set up, and then I get kicked off the island right here by the banker to the left. And it basically takes me to where the boots are. It's just not as good. And then if for some reason you can't do any of those things, you can always just relic and teleport with the redirected house scroll. So up to you on how you want to get here. And then as far as gear setups go, we're going to start with the best setup, and then we'll have kind of a downgraded setup to maybe more of a med-level setup next. Working from left to right, on the left-hand side we have melee. In the top slot I have a Serp Helm, Fire Cape, Salve, EI. It doesn't have to be EI. The EI is good because it allows you to get range bonus as well, but it's not needed with the melee setup. I just have it. I have a Blessing, Dragon Hunter Lance, Bandos, and then a Defender. I have a Vernic. You can bring Dragon too. That's the second best. And then Barrow's Gloves are Ferocious Gloves. Prims or D-Boots, and a Berserker Ring. As far as the inventory, I have Dragon Claws, a Super Combat, an Anti-Venom, a Super Extended Anti-Fire, and I also have a Slayer Staff. That's for casting spells, which I also have a Rune Pouch with Dust Runes, Chaos, and Laws. So that's a melee setup. We'll go a little quicker through the rest, but that setup is honestly my favorite, personally. I thought that that was very enjoyable to use, and I like melee Vorkath more than range, which may be a hot take. As far as the range gear, though, we have full Elite Void with a Salve EI and Avis Accumulator, Ruby Dragon Bolts, 
a Dragon Hunter Crossbow, a Dragon Fire Ward, Pegasians, and then we can just pretend that that's an Archer's Ring that's imbued. I had to take this picture on an alt account that doesn't have the imbue. I'm sorry. Please don't roast me. As far as the inventory, though, uh, much of the same as the other inventory, the things that are different. I have a blowpipe, which is good even if you're using the Dragon Hunter crossbow because the special gives you HP, which is nice. And then I also have a Diamond Dragon Bolt switch for about 35 to 40% of the way through the kill and a ranging potion instead of a super combat, of course. So those are basically the max setups. One big upgrade of the melees, then that's not a face guard, but that's a 35 mil tradable that I don't have yet. So, you know. If you got it, bring it. As far as more of a starter setup, I mean, it is still going to be moderately expensive. The setup on the left probably being like uh, 30, 35 mil, and the setup on the right maybe pulling in closer to, I don't know, 20. I'm just rough estimating, but you know, there still is some input cost. As far as the melee side goes of it, I mean, you can see the downgrades that I made, the notable ones being the Lance is downgraded to a Hosta instead, which isn't fun, but you know, you do what you gotta do. And then I'm bringing a fighter torso and obsidian legs as well as far as the gear there. And you can downgrade to defender, of course. Bring the dragon defender instead of the avernic. Um, and then on the ranging side, basically what we have is we have a blowpipe instead of dragon hunter crossbow. In addition to that, we switched out the boots. And then the thing that I forgot to mention on the left that is also the same on the right is we're adding a BGS to both these setups because they deal a lot less damage than the dragon hunter weapons do. So getting Vorkat's defense down is going to be important. Uh, for the range setup, we brought a couple switches um, if you don't have void melee I mean that's all right you know just don't bring the helm then but would definitely recommend getting all the void pieces if you can so the only time that you should ever bring a slayer helm here is if you can bring a slayer helm and a torture and you don't have a fully maxed out dragon hunter lance setup really that's about it other than that slayer helm keep it at the door bring your salve your void or your salve and your bandos bring all that all right and so now that we're done with the gear before we get into the actual killing real quick we'll just talk about a couple things the first one being range versus melee um this is this really comes down to dragon hunter lands versus dragon hunter crossbow i mean if you have a blowpipe you can't really afford either of these probably so this is really just personal preference um the range method is going to make you less money per hour probably a couple hundred k just because you're spending money on bolts and whatnot but honestly in my opinion the melee one makes you more money and from my experience was just more enjoyable now the whole gear setup is going to cost you a little bit more um if you can't do that you know maybe it might not be worth it but for me personally i enjoyed melee a lot more so i would pick it but i did a ton of kills with range and i didn't see anything wrong with it necessarily either so I think it's pretty well balanced between the two, but in my opinion, you know, Lance just kind of edges out a little bit. And then as far as overhead prayer going forward, you're going to want a super anti-fire with all of your setups, um, basically no matter how you are set up, because Vorkath has a lot of fire damage. With melee and uh, with blowpipe, you'll be praying mage, and with the uh, dragon hunter setup, you'll be praying range. So that's how that works, just going forward. All right, so now that we have all of the gear and requirements for Vorkath, we'll get into the actual killing of it. Uh, as far as how we want to do it, offensively, it's pretty simple. I mean, the only things you're really going to have to change is if you're using a Dragon Hunter crossbow. 35% of the way through the kill, you're going to want to switch from Ruby Bolts to Diamond Bolts. And if you are also using a BGS, what you're going to want to do is you have really two options. You can either dump both specs and then just re-teleport to home after every kill, or you can just try to get a 30 plus spec on him and save specs if you can. Um, that will prevent more baking, but it might be slower. Um, really just depends how you feel uh, your character does against Vorkath. It's dependent on your stats as well, so you know, just kind of test it out, see which one you like more. But that's all you really have to worry about offensively for Vorkath. A lot of it is defensively and just making sure you don't die, because there is a 100k fee if you die. Which, you know, it's not much, but it does kind of set you back about almost a kill. So, as far as the plan of attack, basically, Vorkath attacks you in a 6-1, 6-1 cycle. The six attacks are the regular attacks and the one attack is the uh, special attack. He has two special attacks and they alternate each time, each each way through the cycle. And so really the six attacks that are regular attacks aren't all that dangerous. There's one potentially that can be and the special attacks are, you know, a little bit more dangerous. So we'll break down the regular attacks first. There's three pretty simple ones. There's a range hit, there's a mage hit, and there is a melee hit. All of these, you're just going to be tanking unless you're praying against them, and the only things you should be praying, as I said earlier, are range or mage. So those are the basic ones. On top of that, you then have an acid-based hit, which is going to venom you and hurt you potentially. Um, that's why we have the anti-venom, so just drink that. 
We also have a purple cloud that can be thrown at you. This turns your prayers off. All you have to do is just re-click on your uh, quick prayer and uh, get those back up because if you don't have your prayers up, it can't hurt you. Then you're going to have like a regular fire breath attack. Um, depending on your setup, you know, you'll be at different stages of protection and it might hurt you very little if you have maximum protection. And then finally, as far as the regular attacks go, this is the most uh, devastating and it is the fire bomb. Basically, he just shoots out a big old fire bomb into the air and you have to move two steps away from where you currently are at. It's that simple. If you move one step away, you'll get hit probably like a 50 plus. If you don't move at all, you very well may die. So yeah, that's about the only one you really, really have to pay attention to. The other ones are pretty easy to deal with. Then as far as the special attacks, there are two. You don't know which one's coming first, so be prepared for either, and they alternate uh, through cycles. So if you had one the first time, you'll have the other the second time. It's that easy. As far as the first special attack, um, we have the Zombified Spawn, which you have to cast Crumble on Dead on. Now, if you're doing that out of your Mage Book, it's going to be a little bit harder because if you misclick on the spawn and he's very tiny, you might end up getting hit like a 50 by him once he comes up and hits you. So to prevent that, we have the Slayer Staff in my inventory. Um, that just makes it so misclicks aren't as detrimental. If you don't have a Slayer Staff, whenever you go to cast the spell on him out of your inventory, basically, just right-click him instead of left-clicking. That way that also prevents you from losing the spell if you misclick. And if all of that fails, if everything's failing and he's running at you and you're not going to be able to cast a spell, just shoot a bolt at it. If you're ranging, it's the only thing you can do, and it and it sometimes saves your life. So, I mean, you know, try it out. The spawn can hit 50, so pretty, pretty dangerous. But also not that hard to deal with if you know what you're doing. So, that's the first special attack. And then the second one is the acid phase. There are two strategies for this. The first one is just to walk it out. Just go back and forth until the acid goes away. Basically, you, if you step on the acid pools on the ground, it will heal Vorkath a little bit while dealing damage to you. And if you stop moving, and basically at all you will get hit by the things that Vorkath is shooting at you and it is not fun it's like 15 20 damage per tick so you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna be doing too well through that so you just got to keep moving the alternative is the Wooks walk method which is basically a way in which you still get damage and are walking this is obviously a little bit more advanced and with the melee setup I thought was pretty easy um, basically the way I did it in my head was as soon as my character reared back his weapon, I knew to walk backwards to keep him still in motion, and then as soon as my character turns around, I knew to click back on Vorkath. So I was just going off visual cues for my character, which made it very, very easy for me, honestly. And once I started going off that, I really rarely messed up. Um, as far as range goes, I mess up a lot more with this, as we'll see in these clips. But uh, you're just going to want to do a lot of the same. Just keep moving while you are attacking. And you'll be doing this basically at your furthest distance you can attack with a Dragon Hunter crossbow. You'll be running the back line of the area and then just attacking him and that'll drag you forward. After it drags you forward, you gotta click back, run three squares, and then click on him again. Sometimes you gotta run more than three squares if your venom's kind of in the way, but you'll work that out over time as you just get used to avoiding the venom while also wooks walking. It's definitely a lot harder to do. Um, it's also more rewarding because, you know, faster kills over time. So if you plan on being here a while, I would recommend learning it. If not, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, honestly, so... Up to you. One of the ways I would recommend that you learn Wooks Walking is just doing it whenever there isn't an acid phase. Like, you can do this Wooks Walking method all the time. Basically, it's just a way of walking and trying to get max DPS in. So, if you can do it regularly, you know, you can do it when the acid's out as well. So, you know, give it a shot if you're uh, feeling up to it, or if, if you're not, you know, I definitely understand. And that's basically it as far as the strategy of killing this boss. If you're looking for a little bit of loot or as far as what you can expect, recently I did about 300 kills here at Warcath and I built up about a 45 and a half mil loot tab. So, you know, about 130, 140, probably closer to 150k per kill, but... Uh, overall, definitely enjoyed my time here. I think Vorkath is uh, one of the best money-making bosses for uh, a person that's reaching a pretty high-level account and, uh, you know, one I'd recommend if you're looking to train a little bit of range as well. But yeah, that's going to be it for me and the Vorkath guide. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. If there's anything you want to tell me, any guides you want me to do going forward, let me know in a comment down below. And also, if there's anything I missed, you know, make sure to let other people know as well. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, make sure to leave a sub, a subscribe, a juicy little subscribe and uh, yeah that's gonna be it for me goodbye